Vite is a front-end build tool that can be used for building your applications locally and bundling for production, which sounds a bit like Webpack, but Vite is special because it uses ECMAScript modules, which are native JavaScript modules in the browser, which offer an amazing developer experience with instant hot reloading. In this video, we're going to create a Vite project from the ground up so that we can see how it works under the hood. So I'm here in my terminal at my desktop and I'm going to create a new directory called Vite. I'm going to hop into that folder. I'm going to run npm init, which is going to create an empty project for us. We can just bash through all of this. Okay. And finally, we can run yan add Vite, which is going to install the Vite dependency. Okay, nice. So now we can jump into our code editor and finish setting up our project. So here we are in VS Code, and you can see that our project is very bare bones at the moment. All we have is this Vite dependency. So what we need now is some kind of entry point into our application, which could be a JavaScript file or a TypeScript file, but usually it's a HTML file and Vite expects uh, an index.html by default. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so I have a bare bones HTML template here. So now we need to uh, include a script tag, which will bring in our application. So with a Webpack project, you might expect to see some kind of bundle file here. And that's because Webpack bundles your application into a single file and it rebundles that file whenever changes occur in your code base. But because V uses ECMAScript modules, we can actually point this to a single file and we can define it as type module. So now let's go ahead and create that file, source index.ts. And in here, I'm just going to create a simple function that takes in a message of type string and logs it to the console to uppercase like so. And we can call this function with the text hello world. So now we can go ahead and start our Vite dev server because Vite will compile TypeScript for us out of the box without any extra configuration, which is awesome. So I'm back here in the terminal and I'm going to run yarn Vite. And that has started up the dev server on localhost 3000. So let's go to localhost 3000 and we expect to see hello world logged out to the console. Looking good. So at this stage, you might be wondering how this all pieces together because our browser does not natively understand TypeScript. So how were we able to import that file? And we can see this in action. If we go to the network tab and we refresh the page, you can see our index.ts. But what Vite has done is it's used ESBuild under the hood, which is kind of like Babel, but 10 to 100 times faster because it's written in Golang. And it's stripped out our TypeScript and served up that file as an ECMAScript module, a native JavaScript module. And this is how Vite is able to offer instant hot reloading. Because if I make a change to this file, it only has to invalidate and re-upload this individual file. So if I come here and I make a change, you can see that it's reloaded instantly and only updated this one file. So you can already see how powerful Vite is out of the box without any further configuration. But you're probably going to want some kind of front-end framework. So let's go ahead and see how that works by adding a Svelte component. So let's add a Svelte component here, Oop. which I'm going to call app.svelte. And we're just gonna pop in a p tag that says, hello from my Svelte component. Next up, I'm going to rename this index file to a JS file, only because I don't want to be slowed down by TypeScript right now. And from here, we can include the logic to render our Svelte component. So this is simply importing our component and initializing it here. And because we've renamed this from TS to JS, we need to update this here, index.js. And what we see in the browser is that the Vite dev server has fallen over because it does not know how to pass a Svelte component. So let's add some extra configuration so that Vite knows how to compile Svelte. So we need to start by installing some extra dependencies. So we need the Svelte library and the Svelte Vite plugin, which lives at Svelte.js, Vite uh, plugin Svelte. Okay, so we have our extra dependencies. Now we need to create the Vite config. So we need to create a Vite config in the root of our project. And I'm going to import the define config function from Vite. And we're also going to import the Svelte plugin. And now we simply need to export define config. So we're going to call this function. We're going to include 
our Svelte plugin. So now we can go ahead and start up our Vite dev server again. So we can run yarn Vite, and that has started up the dev server. Let's refresh this and we see nothing. Ah, okay, so we need to uh, also include our entry point into our Svelte component, which is a div with an ID of app. Nice, so we are seeing our Svelte component rendered. And if I come here, you can see that it re-renders instantly, which is awesome. So with a very small amount of configuration, we were able to compile and serve up our Svelte application to the browser. And you could do the same for React or Vue or other front end framework. There's common uh, V plugins for all of them and it's really easy to get set up and running. This is probably a good time to mention how Vite handles your uh, dependencies because Vite actually caches your project dependencies. So if I go into my node modules here, I can see a .vite folder, which is all of the dependencies for the project cache. And that's because your uh, project dependencies don't change very often, especially when compared to the source code. So there's no need for them to be recompiled whenever changes occur in the code base. So Vite caches all of these dependencies when you initially spin up the dev server and it only recompiles all those dependencies when they actually change. So that's just another way that Vite is able to offer this awesome developer experience. Okay, so this looks good. I wanna ship it out to the world. I wanna ship to production. How do we use Vite to bundle for production? Let's head back to our terminal. So from here, I'm going to run yarn Vite build. So uh, what Vite is doing here, it's using ESBuild to transform any non-native JavaScript into native JavaScript, and then it's using Rollup to bundle into a single JavaScript file, which you can see here, it's chucked our bundled application into a dist folder. And we could even ship this now using something like Netlify or Vercel. The easiest way to deploy to Netlify is with the Netlify CLI. So if you don't already have it, Let's go ahead and install it, Netlify CLI, and we're going to install it globally. And now we need to log in, so Netlify login. Okay, I'm already logged in, but if you are not, you would be redirected to the Netlify page to authenticate. And finally, we can run Netlify deploy. I'm going to create a new site. Let's just call it Learn Beat. And our publish directory is the uh, directory that Vite has created for us, which is dist. And we're deployed. So if I go to this URL, we can see our Svelte application deployed to Netlify. Easy as that. So there we go. We have successfully built and deployed a Svelte application using Vite. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to get set up with Vite and how powerful it is. And I would really encourage you to give it a go because once you try Vite, you can't really go back to anything else. Webpack is dead to me now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.